up to its hype, which I don't think was ever repeated again. You know? Interesting. Well, well, I'm sure it was. It was. It was a, a moment in time, and it was certainly not Altima with the Hell's Angels uh, beating people up with tool sticks. No, this was. People were extremely gentle with with one another. There, were, you know, there were births, there were slips and falls, and 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 overdoses on drugs I could never have conceived of at the time. But there was no violence. And for all but, the crowd, but looking, but look, Robert, you're a doctor today. Do you still carry the very same life philosophy, of politic politically, that you did then? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, you so you know. you've. Even, you, you've evolved fiscally, you've evolved socially, but you still remember with, 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 great, with great love and joy that time. That's what I'm trying to say. Is that the free spirits, the freeing of the spirits of that time was phenomenally important in American history. That's what I was trying to say. And we shouldn't dismiss it all as, oh, all those hippies ruin the world. That's nonsense. No, I think you brought it out beautifully. And, you know, I was there. And uh, I felt it, and um, I'm, I am one of your deep, deep uh, fans and acolytes. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. Since you're a doctor, I, I thought the most in interesting thing I did today, insight-wise, was comparing <laughs> President Obama to a retrovirus. Did you happen to hear any of that? I got that. I, uh, I thought it was very ingenious. <laughs> <laughs> I have, what, I, what, I was, what I was saying is he is like a retrovirus, and, and the problem is is that free spirits are more easily infected or invaded or manipulated than rigid spirits, and the communists entered the spirits at that time, the commies from the 30s, 40s, 50s, just as retroviruses infect humans causing the common cold and AIDS and other diseases. And I said that Obama is like a retrovirus who has invaded and infected the body politic with his hateful anti-American views and invaded many other cells with his na nation destructive ideas. I think that's a valid analysis. Do you? And I, I think, too, that, you know, there's no vaccine against it. You know, <laughs> retroviral vaccines. <laughs> no, they haven't developed one yet. So, Robert, what kind of medicine do you practice? I, I just retired from ER medicine after 45 years. I'm sorry, I couldn't catch it. What type? Emergency doctor. Uh, oh, that's a great field. It it's is. It's funny, I, I've met a lot of guys who stay in emergency medicine their whole life because it's more exciting than any other field because you don't know what you're going to get, right? You never know what's coming in the door. And so, therefore, you're, you can do anything, right? I mean, you can treat anything. Anything. Well, that's the, well the whole idea was, um, you know, I, my mantra used to be, no matter what, you know, no matter what walks in that door, I'm here for it. You could treat anything but a broken heart, huh, Robert? <laughs> <laughs> you know where I got that from? I remember once in the upper what, east, west side of Manhattan, east side, on 86th Street. Oh, I'm talking in the 60s. There was a little broken secondhand antique store. Or a clock store that fixed clocks or something. And they had a little sign in the window that says, we fix everything but broken hearts. I thought that was amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely true. By the way, may I say, uh, just before going, that I'm, I and my friends are really glad you're out there doing what you're doing. And Can you imagine that I'm still doing it? Can you imagine I'm still foolish enough to be doing this at my age? I think it's great. I think it's great that all your cells are pumping. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what I owe it to. I have to say it's a combination of massive doses of ascorbic acid, massive doses of vitamin E, massive doses of alcohol over the years, massive doses of garlic, uh, massive doses of other substances. Not, not, nothing to do with drugs, though. I, I, by the way, I never eat desserts, Robert. I will not touch sugar. It's the greatest disease of our time. And I think that has something to do with the fact that I'm still, I'm still functioning. Anyway, I really want you to stay on the line. Please get Robert's name. I'm going to make sure he gets, he gets one of the first, first printing editions of Government Zero when it comes out. Free copy. Robert, thanks for calling and joining and, uh, frankly, enlightening my listeners uh, today. I can't wait till the weekend comes around. I don't know if it's going to be a mixture of maudlin or whatever. Savage Family Home Movies, 1967 to 85. I just got them this morning on all these discs. I, I stared at these 8mm, Super 8mm yellow boxes for, for years. I would stare at them. I didn't know what to do with them. I knew I was, gonna, I was getting older. I said, who's going to look at this garbage? The children don't have time. They're not interested in, you know, who's going to do this? I said, I have to have them transferred, right? So you start thinking, what do you mean transfer? Why do you, how do you transfer 300 movies? Who's going to sit and watch something like that? Nobody, oh, you think your kids are going to sit there with a, a glass of wine and cry over you? <laughs> it's not the way the world works. So I finally took them. I, I organized them the best I could. Then I got fed up. 
I took him to this gentleman, and he organized them for me. He organized them chronologically. He organized them by subject. He cross-referenced them. So now I'm sitting, I'm looking at the box now. I cannot wait to sit with the dog this weekend and look at the dog's uh, antecedents. There's Woody, the little um, Yorkshire Terrier who got killed in front of my eyes by the Dalmatian. What a lovely dog. Then there's Willie, the Silky Terrier who uh, uh, I got from Australia when I moved to Hawaii. He, got, he died eating a frog, a little tiny poisonous frog the size of your, your little finger. He bit the frog and, and died. He, he's buried somewhere there. I even know where he's buried. And when I was watching these dogs, I always liked these little dogs. I had others since then, before then, bigger. The little dogs are very interesting. And Teddy, although he's a toy poodle, I can't believe the scampiness of uh, the Yorkie, the scampiness of the Silky is very much like Teddy. The same kind of curiosity and bravery that these little guys have. I just love these little dogs because they encourage us to live. Just think about it. If they're foolish enough to get up in the morning and dare to go out and pee on every bush on the street, not not fearing that they're going to get killed, why shouldn't you get up and speak your mind? <laughs> I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Let's face yeah, it. Yeah, get down with it. Get down with it. You know that doctor call was so good. I wish that he left me his email. Doctor who likes me and your friends like me, here's what you do. Call back. Get on the phone with Jim. Jim will get your email and send it to me. If we can get you on in the next couple of minutes. Because uh, I, I'd like to meet with you guys. I'd like to talk with you. If you're living in the Bay Area and you've been through this metamorphosis from hippie, liberal to realist, and the guy understands my analogy of calling Obama like a retrovirus because he's in the medical world. He said it's a good analogy. And he laughed. He said, yes, there's no immunity to it and there's no cure. I mean, that, that said it all. I mean, there's no immunity to Obama and there's no cure for Obama. I don't 100% agree because the exposure of an illness is the first stage towards cure. And I don't think that this illness has been exposed properly. But nevertheless, let's leave it at that. WBOB in Jacksonville. Frank, you'll have the next word on the Savage Nation. Please make it 30 seconds or less. Okay, I had a different spin. I went from quasi-conservative military man in the 60s to evolving into being exposed to Ayn Rand and then questioning Ayn Rand like I previously questioned William F. Buckley. And then I moved on to uh, libertarianism. And I finally developed my own rational anarchist is uh, based on something I read in a science fiction novel called uh, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress by Robert Heinlein, uh, in which a character in an anarchistic society describes himself as a rational anarchist. And since he was in an anarchist society, uh, I had to analogize for myself, say, how do I in the statist world uh, become a rational anarchist? But what is a rational anarchist? How do you react to people who want to hurt you? You're a rational... Wait, you're a rational anarchist. You're walking across the street. A bicyclist comes at you from the wrong side and tries to hit you. What do you do? I tried to dodge. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Uh, you're a rational anarchist. A homeless person, so-called, continues to sit on your doorstep at night and makes it defecates on your doorstep. What do you do? I don't give my moral sanction to anybody running over me over with a bicycle or the government hitting me with an onerous, compass story facts. Okay, uh, you have a president who ignores reality, overrides the people in Congress, and is granting a, a pathway to nuclear weapons to a terrorist state. What do you feel? I uh, feel that President Obama has no clue how to refute the false arguments of Islamism or liberalism or anything, I don't think he started the fire uh, any more than Billy Joel said we didn't start the fire. Good, I good, good. All right, so you think he's actually clueless? The country... So, so who is it whispering in his ear saying we're going to take in 10,000? No, we'll take in 100,000 Syrian Muslims. Who would be telling him a thing like that? He's certainly not stupid. Think about that, my friend, rational anarchist. 855 407 only a minute and 30 seconds left of this memorable 9-11 show. And again, 
I want to tell you that uh, it's been an amazing three-hour run here for me today, different than some of my shows. I'm totally energized. I'm more as, I mean, I'm as energized at the end as I was at the beginning. Go figure that one out. You know, it's an interesting thing about performance. If you're performing well and it's coming from the spirit, your spirit at a higher level, it actually energizes you. You come out refreshed and stronger. And if you're struggling and you're, you're just complaining and this, and that, you come out beaten up and dead. Dead, beaten up. You don't know what to do with yourself. I've had all of it happen to me. And the shows where I'm just doing website stuff that you could do, I don't want to do them anymore. Now, how I could do five original shows a week is another story. That's only 15 hours a week of original programming with no script. Try that one if you don't mind. But I, I seem to thrive on it. I'm a man who's like ideas fly off my brain like sparks. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. Some of them are smart. Some of them are stupid. I get it. But nevertheless, my mind churns out ideas. And I have to tell you that that's what energizes me. And on that wonderful note, I want to thank you for listening to The 60s Weren't All Bad and learning that Obama is like a retrovirus. Enjoying some of the music and some of the stories with me today on this journey of ours on the Savage Nation. And for my Jewish friends, Sunday night, never forget, boys and girls, God is going to be looking down upon you. You better be good for goodness sake.